Here are a few plants you could try for making your own insecticides. Um, these would act more as a repellent than a killer, however one or two ingredients would actually kill insects, so you need care. It's known that lemon balm here, this is a clump I've got growing on my plot, which, is, which will grow to as high as about two feet, and it spreads like wildfire. This stuff can be chopped up and soaked in water as part of a mixture to repel it. Any peppermint would also help. Apparently also peppermints help to repel slugs, so just laying the leaves down to make a mulch can help to repel slugs. Um, also any herbs such as rosemary, you may notice if you do grow herbs they are usually fantastic at repelling a lot of insects. Garden mint comes in many different forms and can grow very tall and of course that is, as I mentioned before, a good ingredient for, the, for repelling insects um, as part of a mix. Similarly, bay tree leaves can be chopped up as well. They've got um, insect repellent properties. Here we have an apple tree that's been heavily attacked ever since I planted it and I've had to fight back. I've removed as much of the canopy leaves as I can. This stops aphids getting a grip. Fruit has set as you can see. Uh, even on lower branches, very close to the ground, it's got a crop which, and you need to support the crop with branches and this is often crawling with ants. This is my eucalyptus plant and in, in the selection process at the garden centre when I got it was only about, ooh, I'd say 12 to 14 inches high at the most and now it's reached a height of about 5 foot. Um, I don't overwater it too much when I have, it'll get you problems with, with it'll, it itself will be attacked by fungus but basically what I did when I picked it, they had dozens of them, I squeezed the leaves, right, like this at the garden centre and then you go and smell the leaves and the one with the most aromatic scent of eucalyptus oil is the one I use. You can look up on the internet ways of extracting this oil to make your own eucalyptus oil, it's used as an inhalant. Of course check your sensitivity with all things and I do when I'm down here on the allotment do, do use a little bit of eucalyptus and a little bit of that plant in the background lemon balm I actually rub them um, on my skin and it, it works to repel mosquitoes they don't like me much anyway my blood's a bit too, <laughs> too bitter probably um, and it works they can work as an insect repellent and apparently peppermint leaves can or rubbed on you can also do the same thing but i would strongly advise if you do use herbal treatments such as eucalyptus or lemon balm or peppermint or even bay leaves and you rub them on you to make sure that you're not sensitive you're not hypersensitive to them do a little test first on one area of your skin and see if they work for you they certainly work for me as insect repellents on my skin while i'm gardening on some plum trees which harbour infections such as um, the fungus that causes blossom rot um, and also the fungus that causes cankers, you will find fruit trees where the sap, look at it there, oozes and it can be on branches. You need to remove the lower branches is I've basically got some garlic cloves and actually rub the garlic cloves deep into these um, places where the bark is split. So you can get your garlic cloves like these that I've got grown on my own allotment and your pestle and your mortar, that's your pestle, that's your mortar and really crush them up in your mortar. You need to get that garlic juice out, really smash it up, you know, till you've got it pulped, you see. Once they're really pulped then you need to have them in your watering can, stir them with your a bit of cane like I say just use a you know one of your canes from your allotment borrow a cane um, stir it in your watering can I had six liters of water I use about well this would do to make up six liters this would be strong enough I would have thought certainly as a repellent I don't I mean if it's strong enough it will work as an insecticide so I use this as a wash over my fruit trees once they fruited of course um, people say you shouldn't do it closer to about a month 
uh, before you're going to eat fruit because they will smell of garlic. But if you're doing it now and it's months away from harvesting, and I mean harvesters won't be there until, there until September, October, I'm only June, it's a perfect time to give it a you know, to give these a bit of a garlic wash, or, and then I can of course take these cloves out, I know my hands will smell of garlic, ram the garlic down into any cracks in the ground where I know ants are running, um, or even, more personally, I can take this and rub this on the bark of a tree where people would use bands to stop insects from going, I actually rub this stuff on the bark fruit trees, it's worth putting the hard labour in because you, it will give you a crop, it will improve your crop on your allotment I know it's hard work, but then pests are hard work and that's, but you don't want to ruin your hard work for the sake of them, do you? What I do with my watering can is, it's got a detachable head here which can easily fall off. I just run a piece of garden string, as you can see this is wire, green type of garden wire, wrap it round the spout and run it through one of the holes and if it gets plugged up with the garlic which I've stirred into there, which occasionally it will when I'm using it, I just lift this out and I just push the blockage down. You can use your bamboo cane to do that. Um, you know, don't start thinking of, of reasons not to you know, to have a go at something just because your watering can gets blocked up because obviously this whole stuff isn't going to totally dissolve um, because garlic's got organic compounds but even I can smell this, it must absolutely reek if you're an ant you'd be wanting to run away, wouldn't you? that's the whole point it's not about me wanting to kill kill them it's basically, like, oh, I just want to get rid of them off the plot I don't want them anywhere near things I've worked to produce here um, they don't add anything to the plot so, you know, that's it that's why, that's why I do it. I'm a lover of nature, I feed wildlife like birds, I've got hedgehogs on the plot, um, I don't use slug pellets, um, I remove slugs from things and I do let wild birds have some of my crops, I don't net everything, so pigeons, blackbirds, fledglings, you know that sort of creature, song thrushes and all sorts of finches feed but I just can't abide ants. The other good news about getting rid of ants is I've seen loads of hedge sparrows and sparrows feeding off them, having a feast off them um, so basically you, there are some friendly creatures on your side of course. This is the worst affected um, apple tree, the one with crops that is, on my plot as you can see where it's been attacked even on the outside of the apples here by insects and I've now just given it a complete garlic wash right from the canopy which is just over six feet tall um, a lot of the leaves have been removed at the top here because they've just been attacked by aphids I had ants quite, at one point I had thousands of ants all around this tree you can see the crevices where they were I've given it the garlic wash treatment that I've told you about um, and it looks like it's going to be okay and this tree previously had to be treated with milk bicarbon detergent because fungus attacked the lower branches and comes underneath your branches basically um, but don't give up on this dwarf rootstock many people do I did it first for the first 10 years I kept them at home I just couldn't get anything but then they don't really have enough space at home you use patio fruit trees um, if you're going to have um, ones at home smaller ones you can use in tubs make sure you change your compost give them plenty of fertilizer in winter etc and do treat them when you see infection remove infected leaves look after your fruit trees and you'll get yourselves a little here we have an apple tree with a definite ant run on it it's a small one it's only been in a couple of years um, and I've used, you can see on the bottom there's the remains of the bicarb solution there it hasn't done the trick, the ants are, are voracious predators they will be farming aphids on this tree, in other words there'll, there'll be some aphids hidden amongst these tender young leaves at the top of the tree, the tree itself was only about five feet high, there is a crop on it worth fighting for, so this one here will get a garlic wash from my watering can, then I will get a garlic clove as such um, and I'll just basically crush it in my pestle and mortar put it in my hands and I shall rub a load of garlic on the lower level of this trunk here up to a height of about a foot I might go a bit further up as well just rub garlic on the main branch where these ants are coming up and I'll just wash a load of garlic all around in these little cracks around it let's see, it should work so the other trees on my allotment that I've treated um, I treated them with the spray that I made at home that I showed you earlier that, that one was made with um, lemon balm and eucalyptus and that basically, I just sprayed the trees with that um, but now I'm needing something stronger for these ones where the ants just aren't going away that's where the garlic's going to come in 
So the first thing I've done here, and this has been steeping for two days, half filled the saucepan with water, and I've basically got a load of, this one here is my first experiment, and it's basically got eucalyptus, um, this was take, picked from my allotment um, from the ends, and basically I've just used my scissors, chopped it up, and on this one I'm actually using lemon balm, which again grows uh, to about three to four feet high, and all you do is you chop it up, mix it together, um, I actually use the scissors here while it's in the water and chop it like this, an old pair of scissors like this, just keep chopping basically okay it's in water it's cold there's no boiling involved no heating no flames basically it's all done in the cold soak it okay leave it for a good two to three days and um, then basically once that's done after two two to three days um, get your filter here and filter it through that into your jug then from your jug you guessed it it goes into your washed out spray containers you need to experiment with these ones these used ones some of them are really rubbish but some of them give a beautiful fine misty spray um, sometimes ones that were used as a spray this one was an organic one that apparently did, claimed it didn't harm um, butterflies uh, or bees um, it may, but it was called grabber grub I, fi I finished using it it didn't have much effect actually on my allotment it, you know everything's still crawling with unwanted so I thought I'd make my own repellents um, so that's my first experiment, it's basically lemon balm and eucalyptus, which is this stuff here, it's all chopped up, all steeped in water. Um, eucalyptus oil, yes you can buy it, uh, so you could possibly do that instead if you wanted to do and make, make up a load in water, make up a few drops, try, try about six to eight drops. Pestle and mortar comes in handy for things like eucalyptus, uh, very oily. So basically you can cut off the leaves and because it's full of oil they want crushing out so what you can do is squash them here in a pestle and mortar and then uh, once they're squashed put, pop them in your water. Um, again of course chopping them up with the scissors does help um, and I'm leaving it for a few days but there you go that's why you need a pestle and mortar for that one. Once your insect repellent, stroke insecticide, has been made, uh, steeped for a good two, three days, this one's been done now for three days, it's ready for straining, and basically that's just a question of bringing it over and then uh, pouring it into the jug here, um, first off. So basically just off we go with that. I mean, there will be some of it. Some of it's going to come over, but I'll, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be actually filtering it, filtering it once it's uh, full uh, to go into my spray bottles. So there we go. Well, that's enough. Okay, so that's filtered. The finished solution um, insect repellent. I'll call this one. Um, this one looks slightly sort of. I don't know, it's got a brownie purpley tinge to it, lemon balm and eucalyptus, but uh, let's see if this combination works when sprayed around the pests. I'm particularly aiming this on uh, fruit tree stems, uh, branches, and I'm going to spray it around, give it a gentle spray around where there's lots and lots of aphids. Of course with aphids you can use detergent. Of course you can always get a marker pen, not a bad idea, uh, this is only a, a marker, or, and label your spray, always a sensible thing to do, and I'm going to just label this one uh, lemon balm and eucalyptus. Well I hope that's been of some use to you, so uh, saying goodbye for now, and that's my little diary on how I treat some various pests such as insects like ants, um, slugs by repelling them. You can of course, as I said earlier, repel slugs using peppermint leaves and also various homemade sprays you can make up. The one you've seen at home has been making up um, lemon balm with eucalyptus and I do grow eucalyptus here on the allotment for that purpose. And then something much more powerful of course I've mentioned to you using garlic, um, bay leaves, mint and you can use others such as lemon scented thyme I believe is good.